Do you own a new car? If so, stay tuned because I've got a tip for you that can extend the life of your engine. This is my daughter's 2023 Toyota Corolla. And as her dad, I'm about to do something for her to help extend the life of this engine. Because she bought this Toyota Corolla because of Toyota's legendary reliability. So as her dad and a certified lubrication specialist, I'm gonna give her the gift of changing her oil in the first 500 miles. And you're like, why would you do that? The owner's manual says go 10,000 miles on their first oil change. Well, I happen to know the reason why it says that, and it's not because that's what's actually best for the engine. We're not gonna go 10,000 miles on that first range interval. I really don't care what that owner's manual says because I happen to know from engine testing, from doing oil analysis on engines just like this and others, that the highest amount of wear ever created in that engine is right now, is during break-in. And I happen to know too, that oil filters do not capture every piece of debris in that oil. That's right, it doesn't capture all of them. And those particles that get by actually generate more wear in the engine. So in order to get the longest life out of her engine, what we're gonna do is change the oil in the first 500 miles. And if you own a brand new car, you should do the same thing too. This isn't a new idea, by the way. Back in 1990, I purchased a Honda Accord, also legendary for its reliability. And back then, you had a 500 mile oil change at the very beginning, during break-in. That was part of the process. Why did they do that? It's because they knew you had higher levels of wear during it and you drained it out. Now, they used also used special oils back then that weren't designed to go a long period of time. So the oil in this car now is very different than the oil in my Honda Accord back then. So that Honda Accord back in 1990 had 10W30 mineral braking oil in it. This car was built in Japan. It has zero W8 synthetic in it. While the oils are massively different, the chemistry is different, the principle is still the same. There's still more wear during break-in than any other time of that engine's life normally. And we wanna get that wear debris out of the engine so it's not causing more wear, so we're not taking life away from the engine. Pretty simple, not rocket science. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and do this oil change. And while we're doing it, I'm gonna actually show you the results from my car. I have a Porsche Boxster that has a rebuilt engine in it. And guess what? We did the same thing. And I'm gonna show you the results while we're doing this oil change. So when we're gonna see the results from her engine at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. So let's go ahead and get started with the oil change. So the first thing we have to do is actually take the car and drive it around the block. But it's been sitting for a few minutes now. So I wanna make sure to do is drive it around the neighborhood get that oil warmed up and make sure that we're moving all the oil through the engine and capturing all the debris. All that stuff we wanna get out, we wanna make sure it's up in the oil so when we drain the oil, it drains that wear debris out. If we just drain it after sitting, a bunch of that stuff's still gonna be in the bottom of the oil pan and it's not gonna come out. We're defeating the purpose of what we're trying to do. We wanna get that wear debris out of the engine. So what we have to do is get it all up in the oil, then get it out of the engine by doing the drain. So I'm gonna go ahead, hop in the car, Take it for a lap around the neighborhood. I'll be right back. And you can see right here on the odometer, it says 722 miles. So we got a little over 500 miles on the oil, but we're still way within that 10,000 miles. And just like that, we've got her warmed up. She's ready for the oil change. So now we're gonna get the jack stands out, put it up on the jacks, climb under it, start doing the oil change. And I'll walk you through the process of how to do a proper oil change, just in case you have it known. I'll show you how to do it right here, right now. We got the car up on the jack stands, hoods open. I'm gonna crawl underneath, drain the oil, take a sample, I'll be right back. Okay, so there's a panel right here. And I'm about to remove this panel to get to the drain plug. So, first thing to do is take the panel off, then get the drain plug.
Okay, so I've taken the oil sample, we're letting the oil drain out right now. Now you may have noticed this car was built in Japan, like I mentioned earlier, and it calls for zero W8. Well, it's really hard to get zero W8 here in the United States because in Japan, they have that. Fortunately, in the owner's manual right here, it says you can substitute zero W16. So we have some genuine Toyota zero W16. So we're draining out the zero W8. We're gonna install the zero W16. Owner's manual says that's fine to do. One thing we're gonna do to make sure it's flushed out completely inside is we're gonna pour one quart of the zero 016 clean oil through it while it still has the drain plug out to just flush out any remnants that are in there. The idea is to remove the wear debris so we're trying to do the best we can. We're gonna flush it with one quart. Fortunately, it only takes five quarts of oil. So this six pack of oil, I've got one for flush, I've got five for fill. We're gonna also take a little sample too and send in a sample of the fresh oil as well to the lab. Not for comparison to zero W8, but for subsequent oil changes, we wanna know, okay, what's in this oil so we can look at that and compare it to what the drain oil analysis says so we can get a good picture of the health of the engine and the oil going forward because hey she wants to drive this thing until the wheels fall off i want her to achieve that legendary toyota longevity so we're gonna help her do that by getting this oil change getting her the data so she can be on her way and have fun with her car all right so let's go ahead and pour that quart of oil through and go ahead and get it flushed So while the oil is draining out, let me show you the oil analysis results from my Porsche when we were breaking in its new engine. So we started off with the very first oil drain with braking oil in the car. We went 138 miles and took that first sample. We saw 14 parts per million on the iron combined between the copper, tin, and the lead. That's a tri-metal bearing. Those are the materials in those bearings. We saw a total of about 13 parts per million total. That's just Breaking in, uh, first startup, where the engine's dry, hasn't been primed yet. That style of engine is very hard to get primed in the car, so it's a little bit trickier. So I wasn't surprised by that by any means, but those numbers should drop over time. Then with the aluminum and the nickel, because it's a nickel sill engine, so a nickel sill cylinder with aluminum pistons, that was the very beginning break-in. We were at five parts per million aluminum, two parts per million on the nickel. Then over time, we took another sample 1,300 miles. So 139 miles on the first sample, 1,315 miles on the second sample. And we were seeing there is now we were down to eight parts per million on the iron. Then with the copper, the tin, the lead, those numbers now had dropped down to 11, coming down a little bit. And then the aluminum and the nickel, we were down to two and to one. So they're just coming in, engines breaking in, wear metals are coming down, we're pulling that dirty oil out, putting in fresh oil, lower, lower, lower. So on the next sample, we went 3,000 miles. We're at eight parts per million iron. So same amount of iron, but almost triple the amount of miles. We were at three parts per million on the bearing materials. Again, coming down. On the aluminum, we're down to two parts per million, one part per million nickel. So everything on the cylinders and the pistons are coming right in, looking really good. Then the next sample we went 7,000 miles. So we're a little over 10,000 miles now with all four of these samples, but now we're down to only five parts per million iron. We're at basically one part per million of bearing material, which is basically nothing, doesn't even exist really. And then we're at three parts per million aluminum with nothing in terms of nickel. That engine is completely broken in. Those wear metals came way down and that's the trend you wanna see. So as opposed to going 10,000 miles and then changing the oil, we took four oil drains over basically 11,000 miles and got all that wear material out because as the engine's breaking in, these oil analysis numbers show it's creating wear. Well, we wanna reduce the amount of wear. We wanna get that stuff out. Speaking of getting it out, Pretty sure the oil's out. Let's get back to changing the oil on my daughter's car. So let's take a sample of the new oil, this Zero W16. We can compare that to the drain sample as well. That'd be kind of fun to see what the differences are between this factory fill Zero W8 and the Toyota Genuine Zero W16. If you look at the shape of the bottle and stuff, a lot of people think that Exxon Mobil actually makes the oil for Toyota, and I can tell you they do. I worked for Joe Gibbs Racing for a long time. 
Toyota, basically factory NASCAR team, and very close relationship with ExxonMobil because of ExxonMobil's relationship with Toyota. We all know Toyota didn't make its own oil, but ExxonMobil does make oil. All right, so here's the sample of the fresh oil we're gonna put in, the 0W16. And before we put the filter on, we wanna make sure we put some oil inside the filter. And we wanna make sure we put oil on the gasket so that it seals correctly. So we've done the oil change and we have our new oil sample and our used oil sample. So what's gonna happen now is we'll put both of these samples in the mailer, send them to the lab, and within about a week, we'll actually have the results. But through the magic of editing, you're gonna have them right now. And just like on my Porsche, the sample from my daughter's engine reveals a slightly higher level of iron for the mileage, right? We're showing 13 parts per million iron on the sample from the 0W8 from my daughter's brand new Toyota engine. Now, it's only 728 miles. So 13 parts per million iron isn't a high number by itself by any means. But for the shorter amount of mileage, we're seeing that normal break in, higher level of iron as everything's beginning to break in like we discussed earlier. The other part here that really jumps out is the copper level though. The copper level is 40 parts per million. So that's a little bit higher, but it's part of that break-in process. So in this engine, we got 13 parts per million iron. We've got 40 parts per million copper. And then the silicon is 210. Now that's not a lot of dirt getting in the engine. The engine's brand new, it's very clean. What that is, that is from the sealants, like the RTV sealants used to assemble the engine. It is pretty typical to see a higher level of silicon on the very first sample. With this sample, we definitely have that higher level 210 parts per million silicon. So that number should come down with subsequent oil changes. So as we mentioned, Toyota says, hey, do your first oil change at 10,000 miles. There's no way we're doing that. And <laughs> these results validate. There's no reason to do that. But we're not even gonna go 10,000 miles or the rest of the 10,000 miles on this sample. We're gonna go about three to 4,000 miles and drain it and change it one more time before we give it back to the dealership. So that way, when it gets back to the dealership, it'll probably have about 7,000 miles on it. And we're gonna ask them if we can take a sample at that point as well when they do the regular oil change at the dealership. So hopefully we'll have that first 728 miles drain sample, we have 4,000 mile drain interval, and then the 10,000 mile drain interval, which will really be six or seven for us. And then we can trend that all out. Hopefully we'll see those numbers coming right down on her engine, just like we saw on my Porsche engine. Now the other interesting thing here, beyond the wear metals, is the viscosity. All right, we said this is a 0W8. I've never seen a 0W8 in person before. And wow, the viscosity is 4.9 center stokes, less than five. Now, okay, I'm someone that's pretty comfortable with really low viscosity oils. You know, at Joe Gibbs Racing, I was one of the main guys there involved in the oil program. We formulated these super thin, you know, 0W16 race oils. Okay, this oil is thinner than our 0W16 race oil. I mean, 4.9, that's crazy low. Now, the other interesting thing besides the viscosity is taking a look at the additive package. Because this is a you know direct injection type engine and all that, we're seeing the, the modern, we call it APISP, that lower level of calcium, we're at 1,492 below 1500 parts per million calcium. There's no issue with LSPI, the low speed pre-ignition. And, and you see that, I mean, they're right there at it. They're taking full advantage of all the calcium they can get without getting into trouble with LSPI. And they're making up the difference, adding in 527 parts magnesium detergent. So it's that calcium, magnesium, blend the detergent package, pretty typical for APISP. And then the phosphorus and the zinc levels, phosphorus is 752. So it's right there at the max of that 600 to 800 PPM window the API allows. I think what's here is super, super interesting, right? There's three interesting things about this oil, right? Where I talked about the viscosity being very low, talked about that blended calcium detergent package. The other piece is the molybdenum levels. So going back to my racing experience, one of the things that we would do 
with those racing oils is we didn't want to put a ton of ZDP in the oil because the higher the level of ZDP, the more friction it creates. So ZDP can reduce wear, but it also increases friction. You heard that right. Friction and wear are two independent phenomenon. They're not related. Just because you reduce friction doesn't mean you reduce wear. And just because you reduce wear doesn't mean you reduce friction. I know, mind blown, but we'll, we'll get into that another day. But one of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure we had the lowest level of friction, but we needed good wear protection as well because you're running a thin oil. So what we would do is we would put in basically equal parts ZDP and molybdenum. And we're seeing the same thing in this oil. I've never seen that from a, we call it off the shelf oil before. So we're right at 752, like I said, on the phosphorus and we're 753 on the molybdenum levels. That's, that's crazy, man. You, 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 you don't see that in off the shelf oils. I mean, having equal parts ZDP and Molly is something you just don't see and off the shelf oils. I mean, 753 ppm molly, that's pretty crazy. And then a little bit higher level of boron, 312. So probably adding in there some borated dispersant or some kind of borated anti-wear synergist because molly, zinc, and boron can function together synergistically and you will get a one plus one plus one equals five type reaction in terms of anti-wear protection, which is what you would need when you have a very low viscosity oil like this one. So the next piece was, hey, we no, we couldn't replace that 0W8 because you couldn't find 0W8 here, but we had the 0W16 oil from Toyota. So let's take a peek at how that 0W16 stacks up compared to the 0W8. And what we see is pretty much the additive package is the exact same. So the 0W16 additive package matches nearly identically, it, what we're gonna call it, it's identical to the 0W8. 1,452 ppm on the calcium, 523 in the magnesium, same as before, 780 on the phosphorus, 896 on the ZDP, on the zinc. So you're, you know, you're right there with the same level of ZDP. And then the molybdenum, 785. So we were matching right there with 780 on the zinc. So the zinc and the moly were matched up right there. And then 261 on the boron. So it's that same balance very, I'm gonna call it very modern additive package actually. This is taking what we learn from racing and they're putting it in to these low viscosity oils, which I find super cool by the way. But that's what, what it takes. When you get to these lower viscosity oils like this, because you can't rely on viscosity to do all the work for you, you have to have a top shelf additive package to do the work. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. You're seeing that same kind of anti-wear chemistry that we developed for race oils, but you're seeing it with a balanced detergent package to be able to get the kind of drain intervals you need and the cleanliness you need in a street type oil. So that's neat. Other thing is when you look at the oxidation levels on both of these oils, they're 13 on the brand new 016, six on the 0W8. And what that's telling you is these aren't ester blends. So they're using some you know, PAO type base oils. They're probably using some alkylated naphthalene as the antioxidant to help give it that life, but also give it the solvency to bring the additive package in. So that's what's neat about this. This is really advanced chemistry. You know, so people sometimes think, ah, you know, OEM oils, it's just there to, a way to make money. One, this stuff is really not expensive. And the results say that this is a very advanced formulation because when you get down to those low viscosity oils and that additive package becomes really critical, if you had a traditional PAO ester, a group four, group five type blend, which this is a group four, group five type blend, but we're using an alkylated naphthalene as opposed to an ester, you have less additive competition. And that's the key thing here. Those esters are polar molecules. They want to compete against the additive package. So it makes the additive package we'll call it less effective on a pound per pound basis by removing the ester, replacing it with an alkylated naphthalene that doesn't compete against the additive package. Now my additive package becomes stronger in terms of its effectiveness on the surfaces and the alkylated naphthalene because of its structure actually is an antioxidant by itself, which helps it to have that longer drain interval. So 
really super impressed with what I see here. Very glad that we changed the oil to get all that contaminant out of the engine. That way her engine can live longer. And we're definitely gonna stick with the additive package and stick with this OEM oil because it looks really good. And I can't wait to find out what happens when we get to the next oil change. We'll check it out. So when we do that, we'll come back with another video and we'll give you the highlights and what we see with this Zero W16 from Toyota once we put it in service. So if you like this, you ain't wanna hang out, you wanna see that video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and get the bell notification. That way you know when that video comes out. Thanks for watching.